Hello, Python coders. So in today's video, we are going to go over one of my personal favorite topics when it comes to GUI programming using Python. And that is, what library do I choose? Now, I know I have talked about this topic in the past. In fact, if you if you go through my videos, there's a video I did a little while back that um, explains why I decided to do a desktop or GUI application in Python and why I chose the graphical library that I did, which is PySide. But one of the things that I discussed in that video is other libraries for doing GUI programming in Python. Now, in, to, in this video, I just need to bring this up. And I don't do this kind of thing very often. But I'm just going to put this out there. And I know it may not be a, a very popular opinion. But what I'm saying here is please do not use TKinter. If you're unfamiliar with TKinter, TKinter is a graphical toolkit that is bundled with Python. It's not exactly new. It's actually fairly old. It's been in Python for quite a long time. Uh, TKinter, which the underlining technology in TKinter is TickleTeak, which you'll see right here. This is Tickle Teak. That's how you pronounce it, Tickle Teak. But why do I have such a, well, I'm not going to say a hatred for this, but there, there are many reasons why I have a very strong dislike of TK Enter. And the reason that I'm even bringing this topic up again is because just a few days ago, I saw a brand new tutorial on YouTube about making a, a small uh, TK Enter application. Nothing complicated. And in all reality, it, it didn't actually look too bad. But I was sitting there, and one of the things I kept thinking in my mind over and over again is why are we doing this in TK Enter when we could use WX Python, Kiwi, we could use PySide from Qt? Obviously, with the name of this channel being Jason Codes Qt, I tend to use the, the Qt library. But it's not the only good option out there. But is TKinter really a good option? So I went out and I did some internet searching. And I found some comments that people made on a post that's it's a little little old, it's a couple years old, but it's not like we've dramatically moved past all these Python libraries. And I just want to read some of these to you and give you some commentary. So somebody had asked, should I use TKinter to do a GUI application in Python? It was a fairly simple question asked a couple years ago. And these were some of the more interesting comments that I pulled out of that, which is TKinter has more functionality and works faster than those you mentioned, but still my favorite GUI library is PyQt5. Now we would use PyQt6. Qt Designer is so helpful, and it only takes, couple, only takes a couple of minutes to set up a UI so you can actually focus on implementing the features. You can also use CSS styling, which Qt actually calls QSS, to make the UI look nice and modern. Definitely give it a try after you master OOP. OK, so there's a couple of different points in this video. One is Qt actually comes with Qt Designer. We, we need to remember that Qt is not just a graphical library for Python. This started out, and still is, a graphical library for C++. Included with that, there's a whole bunch of frameworks that are all included under that Qt widget library. But one of them is Qt Designer, 
which allows you to design your interfaces. And I've showed this before, but what I'm going to do is I'll just show this to you again. I'm going to open this up in Designer. All right. This tool here provided by Qt, there's no charge for this. This allows you to graphically design, no pun intended, your graphical user interface. And this was one of the biggest selling points for me when I was looking at a GUI library for Python. And I wasn't necessarily looking for just a Python one, but it turned out that I started coding it in Python and stuck with that. But in my previous existences, I was always using a graphical user interface designer. So I really wanted to stick with that because you kind of get to know what you know and you like having tools to do the work. Well, this lets me graphically design my user interface. It's not as simple as it was in, in previous iterations of what I've done, but this tool actually does work fairly well when you get used to it. So this is a big, big selling point. Now, TK Enter does not have this, and WX Python actually does have a form builder called uh, WX Form Builder. I never liked it. And Kiwi does not have any tool for doing, uh, for designing graphical user interfaces with a graphical tool. So, all right, let's see. Let's take a look at the next one because there are some really, really good points in these. Okay, TK Enter is almost guaranteed to work on any major OS and is built into Python. So there is almost no concern if it is present will work. Now, I've got some reservations about this. I have been using Deer PyGUI since I found it, and then they were talking about a different framework. So TK Enter is almost guaranteed to work. There are subtle differences between platforms. And I think with any GUI library that you choose, Things may not look exactly the same on Windows, Mac, Linux, BSD. I think those are the major players. But this is one of the things that comes up about TK Enter all the time, which is and is built into Python. I don't really understand why this is continually brought up as an advantage of using TK Enter. And I'm going to search for another picture here because it was brought up again by somebody else. Okay, so this was plus one to all of the PyQ5. We'd say we'd use PyQ6 today. It's pretty solid, has a decent set of widgets. It does to let you do what you need with all of that much headache, small learning curve, but once you're past it, 80% of its main functionality is completely at your fingertips. Also documentation is pretty good. This, I will say this, the documentation for PySide, which comes from the Qt company now, is, is really decent. Uh, it kind of used to be that if, you're, if you were using PyQt or you were using PySide, you would look at the C++ documentation, and then you would sort of translate that into Python. Uh, now, PySide has a whole different documentation section for PySide. So what you're looking at is going to be for coding in Python. Makes it a lot easier. Keep in mind, it's a port of a C++ library. Yes, it is. So you have Stack Overflow for people using it in both Python and C++. That's true. Uh, downside is that it clashes with Python style guide. Yeah, sometimes, but don't really necessarily have to worry about that. This is a third party library. All right, what do we got next? Okay, PyQt5 is super easy to use compared to TK Enter. I remember, and I actually like this one. I remember I implemented one project in TK Enter in two weeks and later rewrote it in PyQt in less than two days. Constantly asking myself why I did not do it, do it in that in the first place. You don't need to study PyQt internals to use it in your app. There are plenty of tutorials. Absolutely. Uh, PyQt application is definitely more modern 
then Tiki Enter, which looks like Unix window manager from the 1990s. Now, this has been one of my biggest complaints about TK Enter. And I actually had a discussion a long time ago with a gentleman who uh, had done a lot of coding in TK Enter. He was not really affiliated with TK Enter, he just was using it. And he actually was telling me some things. He said, here's one of the problems with TK Enter the default look and feel of TK Enter makes it look like a Unix window manager. It looks like Unix from the early 90s. Now, if you're kind of going for a retro look and feel, well, you can do that. Uh, I know retro things are sometimes very, very popular, but most people are looking for a very modern looking uh, GUI application. It's the same way with the web. If you're doing a web app, people want a modern web app. But this particular section here where he said, I implemented one project in TK Enter in two weeks and later rewrote it in PyCute in less than two days. Why would that be the case? Well, it fits in with what this gentleman told me a couple of years ago, which is TK Enter is very simple at the start. You can have a moderate to low learning curve and you can kind of ease your way into it. But then you run into a situation. It's not really a speed bump. It's more of a wall that you kind of hit a wall and then you have to figure out a way to get over the wall. And the problem is you want to do something that you have seen in 90 plus percent of the GUI applications that you've ever interacted with. But then you find out something, and that's that TK Enter can't do that. When you're writing an application, you have a purpose for that application. In a lot of cases, in some cases, we do things because we're learning, not necessarily because we want to make a full functional, let's say a whole accounting package. We're not looking at doing a whole accounting package. We're looking at doing a simple training exercise. And things go well. But then you start to expand it. And then you run into one of TK Enter's limitations. And then you're like, oh, well, how do I do that? Because I want to do this using TK Enter. But TK Enter doesn't support it out of the box. And this happens all the time. It's fine when you're building something that's ultra, ultra simple. Then it expands. Then you find out the hurdles that you're going to have to jump through to get TK Enter to do what you want it to do. What probably happened is that's what this person discovered. They were trying to do something. They ran into all these issues, took them weeks to solve it. That's kind of typical. Um, even in styling, it can take a long time because some widgets are styled some ways. Other widgets are styled another way. And then he says, I later rewrote it in PyCute in less than two days. Yes, because PyCute, PySide, those are feature-rich GUI libraries for Python. If you have seen a widget on a graphical application, then PyCute, PySide most likely already has it in there. And they also give you the, the ability to create and implement your own custom widgets. So what probably happened here is exactly what I'm saying. He ran into all these issues and then looked at it in PyCute and everything was already there. And you can style a, because PyCute, PySide uh, utilize what's called QSS, which is pretty much CSS. There are some differences. You can style the application to your heart's content. So I believe what this person says here is simply because I've seen this before. All right. I have to admit, as someone who uses TK Enter for over two years now, developing client applications for our, our Django server side, when I'm not working on that, TK Enter is not really modern. I remember when I started. I was looking for a good library for it. I'm pretty sure the consensus online was against DK Enter as modern. 
as it is somewhat strict, and that's true. TK Inter can't really be made modern without pushing things down its throat like style and hacking. And this is the truth. I have seen this over and over and over and over and over again, which is the way that you make TK Inter look modern is by shoving things right down its throat. And what it what invariably happens because of that is your code tends to look hacky. It looks rather janky, you could say. So in other words, PyCute, PySide have a styling mechanism. They have actually a couple of styling mechanisms built into them where TK Enter does not. So if you want to go beyond the basic look and feel, you're really going to have to fight your way down this. And this is sort of the, the best act, the best way I've seen it put, which is you have to shove things down its throat. All right, that's great. I learned TK Enter at the moment, but thinking of dropping it, I'll learn PyQt 5. Yep. I highly recommend trying that. The PyQt designer is really nice, which is really cute designer from Qt, but I can forgive this little bit of an error. Okay, what do we got here? I had the fortune of choosing PyQt instead of TK Enter for software development. I'm so glad I did. I would have been 10 times slower without Qt designer. And actually, in the beginning, this would have been true for me as well. Um, also, people still thinking whether to switch between TK Enter and PyQt, I'd recommend you switch now. I don't know much, much about TK Enter. I've never touched it, let alone seen a tutorial. But I think it only focuses on GUI related stuff. But with PyQt, you can deploy full software. I'm not exactly sure what they mean here, but PyQt and PySide are not just GUI frameworks. There's, there's a whole big, big library under those covers. Um, you can do a lot of different things with it. Like you can create your own web browser. They have the ability, they have a built in Chromium based web browser that you can use. Um, TK Enter doesn't even come close. TK Enter's set of widgets is actually rather limited compared to Kiwi, WX Python, or PyQt PySide. And I do agree with this. Um, I would have been 10 times slower without Qt Designer as well, especially when I first started. Now, I could hand code a GUI if I wanted to, but I really don't like to. It's not really my thing. I like having the graphical tool to do that with. This is rather short, what they say. PyQt is nice, but it's huge. It's a lot of overhead for a small project. I don't agree with this. I understand what they mean, that it's larger. And I would agree with if they said it's larger than TK Enter, which absolutely. Is it huge? Um, no, I don't think it's too gargantuan compared to other Python libraries that you might install. It's a lot of overhead for a small project. Mm. I've done some pretty small utility applications in PyQt and PySide, more PySide now. And I don't think so. I just think it's a very it's a very powerful graphical library. I, I use it no matter what the size of the project is. All right. PyQt is great once you get practice with it. Yep. I can whip new GUI tools in little time. That's true. The full library is very extensive. Yep. My main complaint with PyQt is that Qt devs have pretty much moved on from desktop development, i.e. widgets. So any attempts to modernize the look of widgets have come from the community or developed in-house. Um, this is somewhat true. The Qt library has Qt widgets, which is the traditional desktop application. But you also have uh, QML and Qt Quick, which are more for web looking applications, mobile looking applications. And in fact, my desktop environment here is actually, I have to minimize everything. This is actually a KDE. So everything that you're seeing here, like my panels down here, all of the things I bring up, those are Qt applications. The Plasma desktop environment is written with Qt and it's using QML to do so. 
but I don't agree with this. Um, modernize the look and feel of widgets. That's really on you simply because there is a ton of community projects out there to help you style your widgets and help you style uh, a cute widget application. So really, I don't look at that as being a problem with Qt or the Qt development community itself. All right, what do we got left? Or the application could crash. And it crashed again. Okay. Now it wants to crash every time. Well, thank you, KDE. I was just saying how wonderful you are. Let me open it up here. Okay. TK Enter is part of the standard library, meaning that you don't have to import it like you do the others. It's also incredibly quick to get something up and running if you're going for a more prototype speed and not looks. Yes, again, we're bringing up the argument of TK Enter is part of the standard library. I, I don't understand why this keeps getting mentioned. It is part of the standard library, but who cares? You can download and import other graphical environments or GUI libraries very quickly. So I don't understand this. And then it's also incredibly quick to get something up and running if you're going for a more prototype speed. I can do that using Qt Designer in a matter of minutes. So I don't understand this either. In fact, if you look at this particular app, let me just bring this window up again. Let's see here, open in Designer. Here's my design. And then if I do Control R to preview that, here's my preview. Now this is the Fusion look and feel. And because I'm using a dark mode for my desktop, it automatically shows it in dark mode. If I don't want that, I can go up to here, form to preview in, and let's preview it in window style. Now we have Windows 95. This is basically what a Windows 95 app would look like, except it's not in dark mode. It only shows it in light mode. But I can preview it in Fusion. I can preview it in Windows, Windows style, a classic Windows style where my buttons look like this. Which, you know, there is a little bit of nostalgia to this. I usually use Fusion, though. And if I, let's take a look at what that looks like in Fusion style. And there it is in Fusion in light mode. Looks a little bit more modern. And you'll notice, too, just as long as I'm in here, that I can actually view Python code or I can view C++ code. And the reason I can view C++ code is again, this is written for C++. We just happen to have a set of Python wrappers around it. So you can obviously code Qt applications in C++. All right, let's close that. Let's see if the application is going to crash. And it does. Let's see if it crashes. And it does. All right. Of course, these things crash when you are doing a video. All right, here we go again. And this is where somebody actually named this as an advantage. So this is the part I really don't understand. TK Enter has three main advantages. One, it is a standard library, meaning no imports. I Who cares? I never understood this. Um, not only that, but most packaging software, like uh, however you say this, <clears throat> excuse me, plays very well with TK Enter. Well, PyInstaller, as a general rule, as a general rule, will play very well with PyQ PySide. So it's really well documented. I have absolutely no idea where this person is coming up with this. The gentleman that I talked to several years ago said that TK Enter's documentation is spread out all over the place. And what he's learned from researching 
TK Enter and TK Enter Applications, is that none of these places have complete documentation for TK Enter. So if you're going to need to look something up beyond the basics, you're absolutely going to be searching the web trying to find documentation on TK Enter. The third one here too kind of made me laugh. It's like it it's that it's been used. I think that's what they mean. It's that it's been used for many, many years, and it's all very much tried and tested. Well, yeah, so what? WX Python has been around forever. Um, PyQt, PySide have been around for a long, long time. In fact, I think the first version of Qt in C++ land came out in like 95 or 96. So these are not new frameworks. These are not things that are new and have been thrown out there for the community to play with. These are commercial packages. There is a lot of software that you use and may have used in your past that uses the Qt library and you don't even know it's using the Qt library. It's just under the covers. So yeah, it's been, these have been around for a while. They're pretty much very tried and tested. Oops, I don't wanna scroll, I don't wanna zoom. Uh, the last one is really important as a few other GUI libraries I've used have worked well until they haven't. Well, I hate to break this to you, but there is no perfect GUI library. There might be something that they just can't do or that doesn't give expected results. Uh, huh? What are you talking about here? I have, no, I have yet to be able to not do what I want to do in Qt. I mean, Qt is one of the most comprehensive GUI libraries out there. What, what can't they do? Or that doesn't give expected results. Well, is that the library or is that your code? I really do not know. Uh, TK Enter always just works. Uh, no, 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 no. And any odd behavior is either well documented or down to your programming. I think this person is a troll. I, I just, I read this and I laughed because it's like, you know, like I said, I talked to a guy who has used TK Enter for a while. He also does, uh, Pi side. Uh, I'm pretty sure he has switched completely now. But he told me the horror stories of using TK Enter. It's not, it's fine as long as you don't want to go past the basics. And odd behavior being well documented, that's a terrible thing as far as I'm concerned. You shouldn't document your weird behavior or odd behavior. You should fix it. And then, and then of course, it's blame the programmer, which I don't go for that either. I don't blame other people for the problems. Are you going to open? Nope. Okay, let's try that again. It always happens when you're doing a video, you know, really ironic. I'll start by saying I hate writing GUIs. It's boring and I fall asleep any every time I have to do it. Yeah, I understand. There are things in programming like EDI and those sort of things that put me completely, totally asleep. I've used PyQt5 and TK Enter. In summary, PyQt5 makes better looking GUIs and having that Qt IDE is pretty sweet. Now, when he says Qt IDE, he could be talking about Qt Designer or he could be talking about Qt Creator. Uh, Qt Creator is a full featured IDE that comes right from Qt. More focused on doing C++, but you can code Python in there as well. So he could be talking about both. TKinter is pretty free, straightforward, not a fan of the pack and grid system for prototyping. I wouldn't use it for anything more than that. All right, so what's my point here? Well, my point is a couple of fold. Number one, there are better options out there now than TKinter. Even if you're doing something small, even if you don't think you're going to expand that application much past the simple, don't use TK Enter. Use WX Python, use Kiwi, use 
Pie Side Pie Cute. Of course, I recommend Pie Side Pie Cute, but I, mean, I am kind of biased here. So here is the website for WX Python. Um, this is actually, somebody commented a while back to me that this is dead too. I don't think this is completely and totally dead. I don't think this is this is as highly developed as PyCute PySide, but I don't think this library is dead quite yet. Um, and the documentation to me wasn't terrible. Somebody said to me that the documentation stinks. I didn't find it to be too bad. Now that it, of course, documentation varies from person to person, but who knows? It's all going to be up to your own personal preferences. And then Kiwi is the open source Python app development framework, and this is native in Python. So this is not a wrapper around a C++ library. This is its own deal. And you can put apps on Windows, Linux, Mac OS, iOS, and Android. Uh, let's see here. And what I have noticed from this too is a lot of it is it looks like it's more geared towards mobile and web development. And there used to be a design tool that several years ago stopped being maintained. So that tool is dead in the water. So if you want to build a GUI, you're going to have to hand code it. With WX Python, there is WX Form Builder. However, again, I didn't like it. You might if you take a look at it. I didn't like it. TK Enter does not come with any design tool whatsoever. Too simplistic, ugly looking widgets, widgets that are hard to style. There's a lot of things that are missing in here. Please, I know I'm beating this to death, but please, if you're thinking about looking at or using TK Enter, please make sure you look at everything else first. Okay, what can be some common problems with Qt? Well, one of the biggest complaints that I have got about Qt over the last few years is it has a learning curve. Yes, PyQt, PySide, they do have learning curves. If you are not already an object-oriented programmer in Python, then this is going to look relatively foreign to you. And I said that in a previous video. Before you try to work with these heavier graphical environments, please make sure that you have a good understanding of object-oriented programming. Now, if you're a C++ developer and you're going to start coding in Python for whatever reason, go ahead. You're not going to have any problem with that. That learning curve is nothing to you because you're already doing object-oriented programming. But a lot of Python developers can get away for a long period of time coding in a, in a waterfall type or a um, process way. So they're not really taking full advantage of creating their own classes and those sort of things. Procedural. That was the word I was looking for. Procedural programming. And so this whole idea of inheriting from a parent class or inheriting from multiple classes like what we do here. What I'm doing here is I'm inheriting from QDialog and then I'm inheriting from a, uh, the class created by Qt Designer. That's going to be completely foreign to you. And so you absolutely should get a handle on that before you start getting into Qt. Qt can be incredibly intimidating if you're new. And I think what makes it a thousand times worse is not being able to understand the object-oriented side of it. Qt is a C++ library. We have Python wrappers around it. And it's heavily object-oriented. Everything in Qt is an object. So you're just going to have to get used to that. You're going to have to work around that. Um, there is now good, very good documentation for Qt. I'm going to show that to you now as long as I'm here. Oh, it was right there. Cute for Python. And I'm in this a lot if I need to look up what a widget is capable of doing. 
Um, you do have some tutorials, but normally what I'll do is I'll come in here and you see I've searched for Q dialog. The one thing I will say is that the searching function on this tends to be a little bit slow. And there we go. There's Q dialog. And then we have all the functions attached to it, virtual functions. Here's our signals. And then you got a detailed description. So if I want to look in here and I want to say, uh, let's see, reject. There is the documentation for reject. Hides the modal dialog and sets the result code to rejected. Don't really need much more than that. Um, let's take a look at QLine edit. I had to look at that fairly recently. There's all my functions. And let's say text. This property holds the align edits text. Setting this property clears the selection. So you get the gist. You can go in here and you can take a look at this. Now, like I said before, what we used to do is we would use the C++ documentation and then we would just translate that over into Python. You don't have to do that anymore. If they do give you an example in the documentation, um, you're going to see it's all going to be in Python. So it's not going to be, uh, you're not going to have to translate from C++. Also, I just want to make another note. Um, someone was confused a little while back about Okay, we have PyQt and we have PySide. To clear up a little bit of that confusion, PyQt comes from a third-party company called Riverbank Computing. PySide, which is called Qt for Python, that's why they have it up here is Qt for Python. This comes directly from the Qt group itself. And that's why I switched over to this is because these are the official Python bindings that come right from Qt themselves. So, and like I said, this documentation has improved dramatically. If you go back three years, you kind of giggle at the documentation we used to have. Now this is a lot better. Is it perfect? No, there's, I've been, in, I've been doing this 22 years. There is no perfect documentation. I don't care what you do. Um, could they improve this? Yeah. Yeah, they could. But it, at least now it's fully functional, fully usable. The only thing I did say is that sometimes it tends to be a little bit slow. But the nice part is here's all of my documentation. I don't have to go to several different places like I would for TK Enter. All right, Python coders. So I'm going to end our video here for the day. Um, again, if, if you see any posts about TK Enter, if you are thinking about looking at TK Enter yourself, I highly encourage you, strongly encourage you to take a look at the other GUI frameworks for Python that are out there. If you're not a Python developer and you're a C++ developer, you have a lot of options there too. You don't necessarily have to switch over to Python. If you're already coding in C++, then you have Qt to choose from, and you also have other options to choose from. If you absolutely want to do it in Python, which is, there's no problem with that, I would take a look at Qt, WX Python, Kiwi. There are a, a few other minor, well, I don't want to say minor, that's not very fair, but there are some lesser known um, graphical frameworks out there for Python. Investigate those two. But if somebody tells you, look at TK Enter, do not. Just bypass TK Enter. It is now a thing of the past. We have much better technology at our fingertips. All right. Any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, happy coding.